Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Terrific Tuesday. What a blessing and an honor and a privilege it is once again to come into your hearts and to come into your homes. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Good morning, everybody. As you guys are coming on, always tag where you're from. Good morning. Good morning, Stephanie and Louise and Christy. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Hey, Shirley. Morning, Lisa and Barbara. Hey, Johnny. Mm. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, Tanya. Good morning, Mother. Good morning, Dominique. Hey, Buki. Pamela Jones, good morning. Sharonda Jones, as you guys are coming on, just tag where you're from. Um, each day you guys come on, I like that, just knowing where everybody's from. Just tag where you're from. For the most part, I know where you guys are, but still pretty neat to see it. <laughs> hey, what's up, Brian? Good morning, man. Brother Roosevelt, good morning, sir. Brother Charles, good morning. Got my brothers coming on in. Good morning. Lois Johnson, good morning. Hey, Denise. Hey, Jesse. Hopefully you're doing well. Hey, Patsy. What's up, Mel? Donna Faye. Dolores, good morning. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Hallelujah. Denise and Bertia, Armani and Brother Clay, good morning. Deidre, good morning. Sister Sheila, good morning. Valerie, good morning. Hallelujah. I love this song. I love all worship songs. Amen. Hey, Betty. Betty Newell, good morning. Tammy Love. Anguilla's in the house. Jocelyn, good morning. So Ray Ray, good morning, man. Sharon Buchanan, good morning. Emma, good morning. Minnie Stewart, good morning. Hallelujah. Yolanda, good morning. Be strong, Yolanda. All right, guys. Hey, Deacon Smith. Good morning, guys. Shana Boo. All right, one more second or so, we'll get it kicked off. Good morning, Stephen. Terrific Tuesday it is. Sister Betty, Carolyn Fuller, good morning. Shale, good morning. All right, guys. Father God, we thank you so much, Lord God, for this wonderful, blessed, privilege, and opportunity. You are absolutely amazing, awesome. You're kind, you're generous, loving, compassionate, all of the above. God, we check off the box this morning just thanking you so much, Lord God, for your generosity towards us by touching our hearts, our bodies, of allow us to allow us to see a fresh new morning. And God, we want to walk into the new things, Lord God. We ask you right now that you forgive us for all of our sins, cleanse us from everything that is unholy, purge us afresh. Give us a fresh anointing, give us a fresh perspective, give us fresh clarity. Help us, Lord God to have a fresh discernment, to be able to rightfully know what is right, what is wrong, which direction to go, which, when to stop, when to pump the brakes, Lord. We're praying right now, Lord God, that you would go before us on this wonderful, terrific Tuesday as we start this day, Lord God. We're pouring in this time, Lord. We're pouring it in because we want the rest of this day to be the best of our day. 
We're tithing our time. Amen. Amen. Lord God, we thank you right now for my St. Paul family for sure. I want to ask that you continue to gird them up, cover them, bless the ministry, Lord God. Help us to prepare at some point in time for a re-entry, Lord God. Help us to completely strategize. Lord God, ask not to put anybody in jeopardy. We love you, Lord God, for this awesome opportunity um, to just speak into the hearts of your people. Bless, I do pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Cousin Shirley, Tony Taylor, um, Linda Williams, Alice Causey, Shirley Bush, Cousin Justin Kemp. Amen. Amen. Just tag where you're from. Tag where you guys are from, and we're getting ready to get it on. Hallelujah. Come on. Here we go. Let's bless him this morning. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Come on, help me. Because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. I love you, love you, God, love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me, Lord, in such a special way. That's why I praise you, oh God. And I magnify your name. Come on, bless it with me. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Hallelujah. My heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. Because you died for me, Lord, way back on Calvary. That's why I praise you, God. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, bless it. My heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you, God. Because you died for me, God. We're back on Calvary. That's why I praise you, Lord. I lift you up and I magnify your name, God. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, bless him. Anybody know that your heart and your mind and your soul, it all belongs to God? Oh, yes. Yes. Because you died for me, Lord, we back on Calvary. That's why I praise you today on this terrific Tuesday, God, and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise, Lord. Yes. That's why my heart is filled with praise. How I bless your name, God. That's why my heart is filled with praise, Lord. That's why my heart is filled with praise. There is none like you. <laughs> Oh, bless the Lord. How many know that there's nobody like God? No one else can touch my heart like you do, God. Anybody ever searched all over the world and didn't find anybody like our God? There is none, none like you. Oh, how I love the Lord, how we magnify the Lord, how we uplift his name, how we adore his name. We extol his name, edify him, and enlarge him on this wonderful, terrific Tuesday. Amen. I love to worship. I love to praise him. I love to magnify his name. 
Hey, man. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Pastor Rosemary. Good morning, Aunt Jean. Everybody, good morning. What's up, Dijon? All right, guys, let's get into this word this morning, my devotion, as we are still talking about, as we're still talking about um, this new thing that God wants to do. It's a brand new thing. Anybody excited about the new thing that God has prepared for you? Anybody excited this morning? Amen. Amen. Sandy Baker, good morning. Annie Redmond, good morning. Alice Causey. All right, this is coming from 1 Kings 19. 1 Kings, the 19th chapter. This past Sunday, of course, we talked about 1 Kings 18, right? Talked about the contest um, between the 450 prophets, Baal and Elijah by himself, right? So here we have a continuation um, of it this morning. And it's in, the, it's in the latter portion. It's in the latter portion of, of 1 Kings chapter 19. Actually, it's coming from verses 19 through 21. All right. Um, you need to go back and read 1 Kings 19. Uh, it's really, really good. I really don't have time to, to, to uh, unpack it all. Um, but I do encourage you guys to, uh, to, to, read, uh, to read all of it. It will give you some beautiful context as to how and why Elijah is going to do what he's going to do with uh, Elisha. And as not to get the names betwixt this morning, uh, I'm going to call Elisha uh, with S-H-A. I'm going to call him Elisha as not to get the names betwixt. Some people call him Eli uh, Elisha. Some call him Elisha. I'm going to call him Elisha this morning. So you got Elijah, J-A-H, and then you have Elisha or Elisha. So I'm going to call him Elisha this morning. All right. So this is the call of Elisha. All right. First Kings chapter 19 verses 19 through 21 in the ENLT version, New Living Translation, it says, so Elijah went and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, plowing a field. There were 12 teams of oxen in the field, and Elisha was plowing with the 12th team. Um, Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak across his shoulders and then walked away. Elijah left the oxen standing there, ran after Elijah, and said to him, first, let me go and kiss my father and mother goodbye, and then I will go with you. Hmm. All right, we'll get into that. Um, Elijah replied, go on back, but think about what I have done to you. So Elisha, Elisha returned to his oxen and slaughtered them. He used wood from the plow to build a fire to roast their flesh. He passed around the meat to the townspeople, and they all ate. Then he went with Elijah as his assistance, assistant. So this morning, I want to talk about burn the plow. All right. St. Paul, you all know, should be affectionate with this uh, particular uh, passage of scripture. Um, do you guys remember uh, probably about a year or two ago, maybe about two years, two years ago there at St. Paul, uh, we had just wrapped up some renovation of the church. Um, I mean, the, 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 the sanctuary looks beautiful. It is immaculate. Um, and I and I couldn't be um, uh, more proud, a more proud pastor um, to see the people work and to see the people pulling together to see St. Paul uh, doing something that had never been done before. And I'm, it, it is so exciting and it's so exhilarating. But before, watch this. Come on, St. Paul. Um, but before we walk back into the sanctuary, mm, mm, it sounds eerily familiar, doesn't it? Yeah, before we walked into the sanctuary, before we uh, before we went back and celebrated that momentous occasion, uh, we had got a big pot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got a big pot, and I told everybody, I told everybody to write down some things that uh, some things in your life that you wanted to burn up. Oh, come on, I'm talking about unforgiveness. I'm talking about hate. I'm talking about envy. Whatever, whatever it was, and I told them to write it down on a piece of paper. And it was a lot of people that day that came to help celebrate that moment of us because at the time we were actually utilizing um, one of my colleagues, Pastor Anderson's church, Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church in, in, um, in Rolling Fork. Um, so at the time we were only going on first and third Sundays, first and third or second and fourth, I can't remember. Um, but of course now we're going full time. We every, we, we're going every Sunday. So, so the alternative Sundays we were at Shiloh. And so we were in, we were having service at Shiloh probably about three months, guys. And all of a sudden, we finally got everything finalized. And I told everybody to write down, to write down their um, particular thing that they were dealing with, because we were not going to carry that stuff back into the sanctuary. <laughs> Amen. We were not going to carry all of that worry, all of that drama, anything that people had. Come on. Look, we're, we're church folk. We're Christian, but we still have not arrived. Can I get a heart or two right there? We have not yet arrived. We are still thriving, right? 
right? We are still thriving. We are still trying to get better. We're growing. We want to go higher. And so we did. And, and we burned all of those, um, all of those letters right there outside the church. It was windy that day. And we burned all of those letters. And then there was a processional. Uh, my wife and I and our first family, we led the processional into the church. I even put my stuff in there, by the way. Yeah, I burned my stuff. Yeah, pastors got stuff too. Yeah, I burned my stuff. And so we walked into the, uh, into the sanctuary in uniform manner. Yeah, and took our place. And it was the most beautiful um, celebration that we could ever have had. Right? And it, it came from this particular pastor of scripture today. Burning the plow. So let's get some context. Let's get into this. Y'all ready? All right? So Elijah, Elijah had just did this big old contest, one against these 450 prophets of Baal, right? And, and at the end, at the continuation of it all, um, um, he actually killed all of those 450 prophets um, because they were, um, they were dancing around trying to get their God to come on down and do stuff. And, 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 and they were cutting themselves. Go back and read First King. They were cutting themselves, trying to call on the name of God, their God, and he didn't show up. And as I told you Sunday... Um, God showed up miraculous, miraculously and mighty um, for Elijah that day. He burned, the, he burned the bull. He lapped up the water. Not to repeat myself, he did a miracle on that day. Then he goes to chapter 19. Ahab went and told his, uh, his, uh, his wife, Jezebel, and Jezebel said, I'm going to kill him. Right? It's, if I can get my hands on Elijah, I'm going to kill him. That's the first Kings 19. I'm going to kill him. So Elijah went on a run. Right after this big old miracle, he's now frantic and afraid of this woman. My Lord have mercy. Oh God, look, I can't get into it. But now, but now here it is. God says, Elijah, let me tell you something. He said, What's wrong with you, man? And I'm paraphrasing. First Kings 19. What is wrong with you? And then he told him, he told them, he said, uh, God says, uh, uh, what are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing? What are you doing? This is verse uh number 10. Elijah replied, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars, and killed every one of the prophets. I'm the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. Then God told Elijah to do something. I want you to go out and stand before me on the mountain. Just go out there, Elijah. Man, I just got through doing something big, something brand new in your life, right? And now you're acting like this. Come on, all right? I want you to do something. And so Elijah stood there, and, and the Lord passed by. A mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose. But the Lord was not in the wind. Out of the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was a sound of a gentle whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his, face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And then again, 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 God asked him, Elijah. What are you doing here? Why are you hiding out, Tanya Fuller? Oh, my God. Carolyn, Jones, Melanie, Sylvester Jackson, Peaches, Chelsea, Shalisa. Why are you hiding out? What are you doing here? God replied. This is verse 14 of 1 Kings 19. He replied again. I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty. I've been doing my job. I've been serving you faithfully, God. But the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars, and killed every one of your prophets. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. All right? Then verse 15, then the Lord told him, all right, okay, all right? Since you want to act like this, I'm going somewhere, I'm going somewhere. Since you want to act like this, and I'm paraphrasing, Elijah, after I was right there and you saw me, man, you saw me rain down fire, lapped up the wood, lapped up the bull. Killed all the prophets. You saw me do this, right? And as a consequence, watch this. I want you to go back. This is what God told Elijah. I want you to go back the same way you came and travel to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive there, I want you to anoint uh, Hazel to be king of Aram. Then anoint Jehu, a grandson of Nishma, to be king of Israel. And anoint, here it is, and anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat from the town of Abel uh, Moholoth. To replace you as my prophet. Eh, eh, oh. Look, let me tell you something before we move on. Uh, look, look, I may not get to my thing today, but God just laid this up on my heart. We are replaceable. Come on, hear me, somebody. We are replaceable. Just because we catch an attitude with God. <laughs> God says, okay, all right. 
right? After I just brought you out, after I just showed you who I am, and you want to act like this, okay? I want you to go down. I want you to go down to Abel Moholoth and find Alicia, and he's going to replace you. Okay, all right. So <laughs> I just want to insert that. So now let me get to the new thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Look, God just have a way of speaking to a heart. I'm going to get you ready to go to the new thing now. I'm sorry, look. All right, so, um, oh, yeah, let me tell you this. And you're talking about Elijah. You're talking about you're the only one. You're talking about you're the only one left. No, you're not, my friend. No, you're not. Verse 18 of uh, 1 Kings 19, he says, I have preserved 7,000 others in Israel who have never bowed down to Baal or even kissed him. Don't think that you're not expendable. <laughs> All right, let me move on. Give you some good news. All right. So Elijah, so Elijah, verse 19, my scripture for today, just want to give you some context. Right. So Elijah went and focused and found Elisha, son of Shapheth, plowing a field. There were 12 teams of oxen in the field and Elisha was plowing with the 12th team. Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak across his shoulders and then walked away. All right. So here here he is Elijah doing what God told him to do. Right. He, he found his replacement. All right. He found the one um, that God told him to go to. He found him. Right. So so I want to bring this point out about this brand new thing. So e Elisha was doing his own thing, uh, plowing behind oxen all of his life, um, doing what uh, doing the family business. Right. Um, performing his normal ritual. And then all of a sudden, God says, Elisha, man, hey, I want to do something brand new in your life. I want to do something awesome in your life. And, and, and guess what? You didn't even ask for it. Oh, my God. God has a way of finding you just like Abram. He, and he'll turn your name from Abram to Abraham. He'll turn your name from Sariah to Sarah. He, he, he will do excellent things in your life. So here is Elisha plowing the oxen. Can you imagine um, being behind um, these uh, ox and, and seeing them do their business right in your face day in and day out and having to clean up behind these oxen? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm about, to, I'm about to hit you in the heart this er, early this morning. God is saying that you have been faithful at what you were doing, Betty Newell. You have been faithful uh, at what you were doing. You've been faithful in your position. Oh, bless the Lord. You, John Woods, you have been faithful, my friend, at washing those vehicles and doing your business. God said, I'm getting ready to take you higher. Oh, bless the Lord. So the roof. God said, I'm getting ready to take you somewhere. Um, you've been praying. You've been fasting. You've been calling on God. God, show me the direction. Show me the, show me the path. I've been asking you to orchestrate my steps. And God, here I stand. And then all of a sudden, there's a man that showed up on this terrific Tuesday and spoke into my heart. Oh, bless the Lord and the, pe and the person of Pastor Thurman and the person of God speaking to my heart to speak to you, Annie Redmond. Yeah, he said, you have been faithful. You have been found faithful. Justin Kemp, you've been found faithful, brother. Your business is going to flourish like you, like you could ever only dream. Watch this. So the Bible says, the Bible says that Elijah found him working. Oh, not meandering. The Bible says that Elijah found him working. Oh, you help, help me, Lord. Help, working, tilling the field, doing his job, not sitting up with his legs kicked up. No, God is looking for people that are already working. Mm. God is already people looking for people that are, that are passionate about what they do. Because, look, if you be faithful, here it is, if you be faithful over a few things, yeah, he, he will bless you to be ruler over much. Yeah, but you got to be found working. You got to be found faithful. You got to be found digging. You got to be found groveling. And I know that where you are right now may not be the position that you desire. It may not be the company that you desire to work for. It may not be uh, the role that you desire to have. But keep on working. Oh, bless the Lord. And do season. There's winter, spring, summer, and fall. But in the spiritual realm, there is due, D-U-E. There is due season. And I believe my brother and my sister, Stephanie Leach, I believe that God is getting ready to open up due season. 
Oh, bless the Lord. He's getting ready to open up due season, Jamie. Oh, Buki, he's getting ready to open up due season, Shirley Tate. You've been faithful in your position as Gap Leader. Oh, my God. And I want to tell you that God is getting ready to take you higher. You have been found faithful, D. Hey, my sister, you've been found faithful. You Look, you had to walk away from some stuff. God has said, now it's time to embrace the new. It is time now to embrace the new. Watch this. The Bible says that Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak across his shoulders. Yeah, look, look, you, 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 have, been, you have been operating as Clark Kent, Brother Charles. <laughs> Yeah, Justin Kemp, Deacon Smith, Pastor Daddy. Yeah, y'all have been operating as Clark Kent behind the scene. Now God is saying I'm about to put a cloak around you, and now you're about to you about to soar like Superman. Oh, bless the Lord! You about to soar? You about to go higher? Anybody want to go higher on this blessed terrific Tuesday? Anybody excited about this brand new thing that God is getting ready to do? You don't know where it's going to come from. You don't know who God is going to bless to touch you. You don't know where that financial blessing is going to come from. You just need to say, God, here I am. I stand ready to receive. Oh, bless the Lord! I stand ready. Watch this, Elisha, Elisha. He left the oxen standing there. Ooh, he left them. Yeah, sometimes you got to walk away yeah, to embrace. Sometimes you got to walk away to embrace the new. I made a point right here. I made a point. Let me read my point. The moment you recognize uh, going higher that God is going to take, he's getting ready to take you higher. Only then will you let go of the lesser. Let me say it again. Once you recognize that God is getting ready to take you higher, only then will you let go of the lesser. Oh, bless the Lord. And I believe, my God, I believe right now that God is getting ready to take somebody higher. Mama, he's getting ready to take you higher. Sharonda and Melanie and Shell and Terrence, Dorothy Williams, Benny Stewart, Pamela Sapphoy. He's getting ready to take you higher in the Lord. But you've got to let go of the lesser. Some of us don't want to let go of some stuff because we it feels good. Somebody don't want to let go of that relationship because of what it brings. It brings you comfort. But God said, I'm getting ready to shake up that bed. I'm getting ready to shake up that house house. I'm getting ready to shake up that relationship. I'm getting ready to shake up your mindset. I'm getting ready to shake it up because I'm getting ready to put a cape around you. And the Bible says, uh, watch this, watch this. And here, here's the flesh. Here is humanity speaking. Watch this. Elisha left the ox standing there. He ran after Elijah. He was running. Thank the Lord. Look, I've been, I've been behind these smelly oxen all my life. I've been do doing my daddy's business. Yeah, I've been running this family business. And um, thank God for it. Oh, bless the Lord. Thank God for it. But God is saying that, watch this, I'm getting ready to do something brand new, right? Um, and so many of us, so many of us, right here we go. So many of us are in this sick cycle of routine and mundane. Go to work, go home, go to church, go to work, go home, go to church. And we go through this cycle. And we go through this cycle all of our lives. Anybody tired of going around the cycle, just like the children of Israel, going around that mountain for 40 years and we see what God has for us, but we're afraid to let go of the lesser. We're afraid to let go of, of, what, uh, of that comfort. We're hanging on by our fingernails where we don't want to let go because we are fearful of, of the next step. We're fearful that, that God is not going to provide. We're fearful. We're fearful. We're afraid. We're afraid. We're, but where is faith? Come on. Come on, Sylvester Jackson. Come on, my friend. Where, where, where is faith? Where is faith? All right. Watch this. Here it is. Here's humanity. Here's his flesh speaking. Here's Elisha's flesh speaking. He says, watch this. First, right, let me go and kiss my father and mother goodbye, and then I will go. I made another note. I made another note. Here we go. When God calls you, you don't need anybody's permission, not even your mom or dad. And I love both of y'all, mom and daddy. But when God calls you, you don't need anybody's permission. <laughs> I want to yell, but God said, just talk to him this morning. He let them hear my heart. Let them hear me. When God calls you, Annie Redman and Dorothy Williams, when God calls you, you don't need permission from anybody. Oh, watch this. He said, let me go and talk to mama. Let me go and kiss mama. Let me go and kiss my daddy. And then I will go with you. I look at Timothy. 
Can I put some Bible on it? I look at Timothy, um, the, the, the protege of, of Paul. All right. I look at him. Look, this brother had been taught by his grandma Lois and his mother Eunice, whichever one, either the mother or the grandmother, Lois and Eunice. Faith was already in him. And I'm just speaking right now. Paul told Timothy, look, brother, he said, you've got it in you. Just stir up the gift. That's what I'm doing. Look, I am fertilizer this morning to your seed. I'm not putting a seed in you. I'm just fertilizer. I heard T.D. Jake say that, and I got to give him credit for it. I am just fertilizer, Alice. I'm just fertilizer because you know what you've been praying for. You know what you've been hoping for, Jocelyn. Uh, you've been, you know what you've been uh, as aspiring for, Brother Roosevelt and, and Mother Tankson and, and Daddy Tankson. You, you know, you know, you know the thing that God has placed upon your heart. And watch this. If you had to ask from, mm, oh, hallelujah. If you had to ask permission from everybody else, you wouldn't be where you are today. Oh, bless the Lord. Come on, help me somebody. If you had to ask permission from everybody else, you would not be where you are today. God is the one that affirms you. And I'm just the one to fertilize the seed that is lying dormant in your soul. All right, watch this, watch this. And I'm going to go over time. <laughs> Amen, watch this. So Elijah replied, go on back, go back. But do you realize what I just did? Do, do you understand what I just did? I put my cloak around you. Yeah, I put my cloak around you, symbolizing that God is making you the next prophet. Do you understand what I just did? That's what Elijah told Elisha. He says, go ahead, go back. But understand that you're not the same. You're not Clark Kent anymore. You're Superman. I'm symbolically saying you're not Clark Kent anymore. It's time for you to start leaping over tall buildings. <laughs> It's time for you, it's time for you to start using your x-ray vision discernment. Oh, bless the Lord. It's time for you to start um, speaking those things. And, and, and one, there was one instance when, uh, that when, when an axe head fell in the water. Oh, bless the Lord. An axe head. I'm talking about big metal. An axe head fell in the water. There, there's some work for you to do. And you got a branch. You got a branch through it in the water. And that axe head floated. Look, you look, Elijah, do you know what I just did for you? This is the same Elisha that asked Elijah for a double portion of the Holy Spirit. So the Bible says, verse 21. So Elisha, Elisha returned to his oxen. Here it is. He returned to his oxen and slaughtered them. He used the wood from the plow to build a fire to roast their flesh. So what he did. He burned, he slaughtered the oxen, he slaughtered them, and he used the wood from the plow to build a fire to roast their flesh. Why did he do that? Why did he kill the oxen and more importantly, more importantly, burn the plow? In essence, my brothers and sisters, Elisha was saying that what God is calling me to, when things get rough, when things get jacked up in my life, I'm not going to go back to what I used to. I'm burning it all. I'm burning the plows. I'm not going back to my old life. Oh, bless the Lord. I'm going to this new thing. I'm going to this new thing. I'm going. I'm going to the new. Th I'm not going to go back. Some of us need to burn our old relationships because you know when things get crazy and you get you get horny at night. Let me go call it like that. Y'all know I'm Pastor Transparent. When you get horny and you get freaky. You go back to that old relationship that you know is not good for you. Oh, bless the Lord. Look, I'm going to keep, somebody said, keep it real, pastor. Somebody need to burn that stuff so that you can't go back to it. Oh, bless the Lord. Somebody need to burn those old things. Somebody said, don't burn the bridges. Sometimes we need to burn the bridges and we need to burn the stilts. We need to burn everything so that we don't go back to it and rely on that stuff. The Bible says... That he burned the ox. He burned the plows. I'm not going back. Thank God for what I had. But I'm not going back. Oh, bless him. I'm, I'm, I'm embracing the new. I'm embracing this new opportunity. I'm embracing this new career. I'm embracing this new joy. I'm embracing this newfound love. I'm embracing it. I'm not. Somebody need to shout. I'm not going back.
Yeah, because back there was frustration and aggravation. Watch this. Back there was a lot of success, says Paul. Paul says, watch this. I was came from the tri tribe of Benjamin. I was circumcised on the eighth day. I'm, I was set at the feet of Gamaliel, and I was right there. But he says, I'm even walking past my old, my old success. So that when, when things get jacked up, I can't say, oh, look at all my beautiful degrees on my wall. My, my degree, thank God for my education. But watch this, my education won't help me when, when the chips are down. Oh, my Lord, hallelujah. My education, amen, is good that I got it. But my education can't sustain me when the, when the winds start blowing in my life. Mm, I'm burning it. I'm burning it. I, God said, I won't, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to give you some brand new success. I'm getting ready to give you some brand new degrees uh, that school can't teach you. Oh, bless the Lord. I'm getting ready to give you some degrees uh, that, that your education can't sustain you. I want to help somebody to burn the plow. Somebody shout, I'm burning it today. I'm burning it today. I'm letting go. I'm letting go of my success. I'm letting go of my, my failures. I'm letting go of some stuff. I want to receive the new things of the Lord. I hope this bless you. I want to receive the new stuff. And then watch this. He said, he said, um, and then he passed the meat around. In other words, he had a big old party, a big picnic. Yeah, he had a big picnic and gave all the meat. He, he gave all the meat to the townspeople and they all ate. And then he went with Elijah and his brother's life ever since then was set on fire. Yeah, this brother was able to do some amazing stuff. Y'all need to read. Y'all need to read it. Amen. I hope this bless you because anybody excited about the new thing that God has for you? Anybody excited about that new thing? Come on. Oh, bless the Lord. Yeah, Deidre said, I'm letting it go. Yes, I'm letting it go. Mama said, I'm, I'm burning the plow. Let it go. Hallelujah. I hope that bless you guys this morning. There's so much more in it. Uh, you pray over it and ask God to show you some stuff through this. All right. Father God, we thank you so much for this opportunity to just have some devotion. You're telling us, Lord God, that you have great and awesome things for us, but sometimes we got to let go. And not only let go, we got to burn the plows in our lives so that we don't go back to rely on it, Lord. You want us to solely rely on you. We don't, we, you want us to solely trust in you and your plan. God, you created us for a specific purpose. And God, everybody's trek is different. As much as I love my father, our paths are different. As much as I love my mother, our paths are different. You want to do something new. And God, we receive the new. We thank God. Hallelujah. We thank God for all of the lessons and the, and the dreams and the joy of what was planted. But now we thank you now, Lord God, for the fertilizer. Oh, bless the Lord. We thank you for the fertilizer. We thank you for the gift that is being stirred right now. Oh, God, I'm praying for somebody right now, Lord God, that is having, that will have, even after hearing this, that still will have a hard time of walking away from some things and letting it go. I'm praying right now, Lord God, that, that we will walk in faith and not fear. God, you promised us. You promised us that you will be with us. You promised us that you will never leave us. You promised, these are promises, that you will never forsake us. Now, thank you, Lord God, for, for this beautiful hour of preparation. And I thank you, Lord God, that there's a sprout being sprung right now in somebody's life. I believe right now, Lord God, that there is a sprout coming up in somebody's life. That seed that somebody thought was dead is now being fertilized. And God, the Bible says one man plant, another water. But at the end of the day, it's you, God, that gives the increase. We thank you for increase this morning on this terrific Tuesday. We love you now in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I pray that you guys receive that word, this devotion on this morning. Hear my heart uh, and go higher in the Lord. God bless you guys.